All right, everyone. In this segment, we are going to discuss how to intubate a patient with a suspected cervical spine injury. That means that the cervical collar is in place or you're holding manual inline stabilization. Um, we're going to start off by looking at all the different options that are available. We're going to talk about the direct laryngoscope and whether or not this is useful and what's, whether or not this is successful. Then we're going to go through all the video laryngoscope options. We're going to cover the standard geometry blades, the hyperangulated blades. And we're going to look at bougies. We're going to look at uh, rigid stylets and regular stylets. We're going to go through all of it here to sort of get to the bottom of what option is best for patients with suspected cervical spine injury to get you the most success when you're intubating these patients. So to begin with, just a few reminders about managing patients with cervical spine injury and intubation. First of all, they need to remain in the neutral position. That means that you're not able to elevate the head or put them in the sniffing position or the ear to sternal notch position. And that's gonna make your passage to the tracheal opening a little bit more difficult. Those angles are gonna be a little bit more acute and your views are not gonna be as good. Second, because this collar is fit snugly against the chin and the jawline here, it actually restricts mouth opening. And that's gonna leave you less room to work uh, and less room to maneuver, and this is also gonna present a real challenge for you when you're intubating these patients. So let's go through everything here and figure out which is the best way to intubate these patients. And we're gonna start by using the direct laryngoscope. Now, the direct laryngoscope requires direct line of sight in order to place the tube. And this is challenging because if you can't put the patient in the ear to sternal notch position, uh, aligning those axes is gonna be much more difficult. But let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the blade in the mouth. I've got a view of the tip of the vollecula. I'm able to seat there, epiglottis, retinoids. Uh, I still have a, I have a view of the retinoids, but it's not great. Uh, and it's requiring me to use a huge amount of force, upward force on the cervical spine to get a view that is uh, safe enough for me to intubate. Now, I'm able to place that tube, but it required a lot of effort uh, and it required a fair amount of force. So, I would say that if you're going to use a direct laryngoscope, you may want to consider using manual inline stabilization to give you a little bit more accessibility and a little bit better views. Um, but it is possible to perform this with uh, a cervical collar in place, just not ideal. So let's go ahead and intubate this patient uh, using the video laryngoscope and we're going to go through a couple of different blades to see what that feels like uh, and we're going to kind of give, a th give you some pros and cons of some of the blades. All right, so the first blade we're going to start with is this Glidescope Mac 3 blade. All right, this is a standard geometry blade uh, and this is the one that I think people reach for most often in their practice. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and see how this works not only with a stylet but also with a bougie with the cervical collar in place. All right. So I'm traveling midline around the base of the tongue. I see the epiglottis come into view. All right. I have a pretty decent view but I'm definitely having to apply a fair amount of upward force in order to be able to get a, a good enough view, a little bit more than I think I would with a hyperangulated blade, but we'll see when we get there. I'm gonna go ahead and place the tube in the mouth uh, and insert the tube. And uh, that actually was fairly easy. I was successful, so a standard geometry blade with a cervical collar in place with video laryngos laryngos laryngoscope works. Um, it does require, I think, a little bit more upward force, which I think puts a little bit more stress on the neck than I would like. But tube delivery was fairly easy. Uh, let's go ahead and try this now with a bougie. So I'm gonna probably wanna put a little bit of a bend in the bougie. Uh, and I'm 
I'm going to get, so now because I have the bougie, I don't maybe need quite as good a view. I can see the arytenoids there, so that's all I need. That definitely requires less force. Um, but in this insta instance, the bougie actually wants to go below. It actually does not want to go into the glottic opening and into the trachea. And I think that's probably because uh, I have this patient in a collar and I can't actually put them in sniffing position. So I'm going to try to see if I can get a little bit more angle on this bougie and try one more time. All right. And there you go. As you can see, I was actually able to get the bougie in place, but it definitely required more bend in the bougie. But the, the good thing about using the bougie is that it actually uh, allowed me to put a little bit less force, upward force, uh, on the cervical spine with the laryngoscope blade. So I think that's good. So if I were going to use this, uh, I would consider using a bougie, but understand that you might not be successful all the time if you can't get enough of a bend in the bougie. All right, next we're going to go to the hyperangulated blade. This is the Low Pro 3 from Glidescope. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and try intubating with this. So remember, with these hyperangulated blades, you need, need to use the, hyper, the rigid stylet. So let's go ahead and insert the rigid stylet into our tube. Take a look in the mouth. Get around the base of the tongue. Now this Low Pro 3 is a little small, actually, for this adult size mannequin. Uh, and some of this, I would say, is probably because I have limited distraction of the jaw it's actually limiting my ability to get into the vollecula the way I would like. But I'm able to do it. I'm definitely, it definitely takes a little bit of extra effort. All right. Now I've got a pretty good view, and I'm not actually pulling as hard as I was before uh, with the standard geometry blade. I'm actually using less upward force and able to get that view that I want. And the tube delivery was easy. There was no problem with that at all. I'm able to get the tube into place uh, without any difficulty. Uh, so the hyperangular blade, uh, the Low Pro 3, maybe a little small, uh, maybe uh, a little bit more difficult to get into the vollecula if the, the cervical collar is in your way, but it certainly makes tube delivery uh, easy uh, and minimal force. All right, let's do this again, but this time we're going to do it with the slightly larger Low Pro 4, uh, and we'll see what happens when I use the Low Pro 4. Fairly easy to place in the mouth, easy to get around the base of the tongue. All right, now that I've got the view that I want, I'm going to go ahead and place the tube in the mouth. There's definitely a little less room in here to maneuver the tube. There's no doubt about that. But I can guide the tube really easily to the glottic opening with minimal force and tube delivery is really straightforward. So the advantages of the slightly larger blade is that I'm able to get a little bit deeper, I'm able to get maybe a slightly better view, uh, but getting the tube into the mouth, there's a little bit less room to maneuver. Um, but I would say uh, of all three of those blades, either the Low Pro 3 or the Low Pro 4 with a rigid stylet uh, was the option that seemed to be the most effective for me. All right, everyone, let's go over what we've learned. First of all, 
It is possible to intubate a patient with cervical spine injury with a cervical collar in place without having to use manual inline stabilization. But remember that what we learned was that the direct laryngoscope doesn't work as well as the video laryngoscope in this situation. And that's because you have to keep the patient in the neutral position. You can't put them in the ear to sternal notch position, which you would do ideally to get the best direct line of sight. And so that makes your views harder. It also is because you have a restricted mouth opening and then you can't really get that great view to the glottic opening. So based on what we've learned here today, I don't think that the direct laryngoscope is something that you want to use if you have this cervical collar in place. Uh, and if all you have is a direct laryngoscope, then I do suggest that you use manual inline stabilization. Now for the video laryngoscopes, what we learned is that the standard geometry video laryngoscope works perfectly well with just a regular stylet. Uh, if you have enough angle on your bougie, you can also use a bougie effectively in this situation. But what we really found is the most effective is the hyperangulated blade. That hyperangulated blade allows you to get around the primary curve and around the base of the tongue, give you great views of the glottic opening with less force, and allows you to deliver the tube safely. So, Based on everything we did today, my recommendation is leave the cer cervical collar in place. Keep the patient in the neutral position, use a hyperangulated blade with a rigid stylate to intubate, and you'll be protecting your patient from harm. All right, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check out theprotectedairway.com for more.